everyone. It's Halloween night. I hope everyone had a safe Halloween. Of course, for people that celebrate it. Otherwise, hope everyone is doing well. And just wanted to kind of relay a quick thought. After watching my last video on dysphoria, first of all, not dealing with it like I was. It's not intense or incapacitating like it was for those few days. But doing a lot better. Getting a lot more sleep, that's great. But basically, after seeing my video and some of the comments, one of the points I wanted to make clear in the last video and didn't really was that I was talking about expectations I have and stuff and in some ways they were filled but there's still things that I did not think about or think I would be dealing with at this point and it's still really hard. So I was saying that, you know, you can have all the surgeries available to you you can check out, you know, check off every box, and you still won't be cisgender. When you transition, and this doesn't mean in any way that you have to identify as a trans male or whatnot, but you're still trans, and I totally respect those that need to leave their past behind and live as self, but you're still not cisgender, and going into this, you have to know that even if you have all the finances in the world to pay for everything, you're still not going to be, or you're not left with with what someone who was born male has and the ability to do, you know, such as like reproduction or have an erection on your own. You know, if you get a fellow or if you get a meta, it's not going to be the same size as an adult male penis. Of course, it's relative, but that's just something that's like such a simple thing that, oh, you don't transition to cis. And not all people want to. When I first started, I really so badly wanted to be a biological male. But during these eight, nine years of transitioning, I've come to really value the trans experience. And I identify completely as male, but I'm not so ashamed to be like, oh, I'm a trans man, even though I'm definitely a man first. But, you know, being trans is part of my identity, and well, it's not something always on the forefront of my mind, but it's still always there. So it's just, you know, when I first started, I just wanted to be just like a biological male and forget my past. And going down the line, it's not that easy to do. And after a while, it's like making up history sucks. And I don't know who knows what, and it's just easier to be me and people are cool with it and that's fine. So it's still something I struggle with because I feel like I lost out on a boyhood or getting to bond with my father in a father-son way or, you know, getting to play on boys' soccer teams or whatnot and just not having to be socialized as a female, but other times I'm grateful I was. So I don't know. I don't really long to be cisgender anymore. Like, I will... I definitely get envious, like my younger brother uh, has a baby, and it's like, oh, well, you know, that sucks, like, he can get someone pregnant and I can't. You know, it's like, these are just things you have to come to terms with, and since the vlogging culture is so large and so strong, it's gotten to be where it is, it's really awesome to see just how people deal with it differently and how it works for them in their lives, so that's really great. Like, sometimes I wish when I started transitioning that there was YouTube because I just feel like, I don't know, sometimes I'm like, I don't know where to turn for advice, but no, there's lots of guys on here, and um, there's been some really helpful videos that random various people have made that have really helped me, and just knowing I'm not alone out here, and, um, you know, because sometimes I feel like people look to me a lot for advice, which is great, but I also feel this, like, responsibility to make, like, good videos, and to be thorough and to cover everything and it kind of awakens that perfectionist to me and then I never get anything out there but it's also like when you're feeling like shit it's kind of hard to get on here and vlog and feel like you're letting down thousands of people but um I also like that my videos aren't nearly as popular as they were I feel like they used to dominate the trans videos it's kind of annoying seeing my face everywhere and hearing my voice, that's another thing. I can't stand editing vlogs for too long because I drive myself crazy hearing myself. But there's a lot of good, new, fun, awesome guys to watch, and I'm kind of glad to see, <laughs> not the responsibility so much, but just what people are looking at YouTube for mostly is the newly transitioning stuff, and they've got it covered. And then I feel less, like, pressure to have to make these perfect videos. I feel like oh, it could be like almost 2 in the morning and you could just be like, hey, I had this thought. You don't transition to cisgender. You will always be trans, whether you identify that way or not. And um, it just, that can be a really hurtful thing. Like, it still hurts me in some ways, even though I've come to terms with the trans part of my identity a lot. So just know that when you're starting out or if you're in kind of that mid-transitional phase where 
but I feel like it starts with a lot of guys and me, you know, after chest surgery, and you kind of are like, okay, what's next? And either you want lower surgery or you don't, and I don't know, it's kind of this odd phase, but that could be another video. That's all I want to share. I hope everyone is doing well where they are, and have a great, happy November. All right, peace.